for joining in on today's podcast. It is June 2nd, and we will be dedicating this episode to introducing the York Village Housing Association. Welcome to LaVille, everybody. My name is Andrew Van Norden. My name is Natsi Zmisa. And uh, just a, first, a little background information on us. Uh, I'm a recent undergraduate uh, from York University, uh, from the Faculty of Environmental Studies, and I'm the founder of York Village Housing Association. And I am actually currently still finishing my undergraduate. Uh, I am in the Faculty of Environmental Studies and Work and Labor Studies. I'm doing a double major. Uh, and I am the co-founder of the York Village Housing Association as well. So today, uh, for today's podcast, we will be joined by uh, Aaron Naboku and Raymond Chen, creator and co-creator of a localized social networking app known as Howdy, and fellow residents living in the village at York University Heights. Uh, today's podcast will look at what makes up the village at York University, both materially and, materially and symbolically, followed by a discussion of the founding of York Village Housing Association and an overview of multi-tenant as opposed to student housing. YVHA would also like to acknowledge and thank the people for making the bill possible. The podcast will conclude with an overview of the entire series. And uh, the goal is to highlight how the bill works to politicize both positive and negative experiences living in student and multi-tenant housing in the on and off campus at York University. So most of y'all are probably asking yourselves, what is the village? And the short answer is it's pretty complex. Um, it's a new urbanist development and new urbanism is something we'll be touching on later or this kind of new suburbia um, that was built in 2003. Uh, and, you know, they proposed originally 500 houses, but in 2005, they, de or they decided to add uh, another 300. So there's a total of 800. And by 2005, we already started to see what the village was becoming. Increasingly, there were uh, students that were living in rooming houses and we're seeing these single family homes, uh, which is how Chadview Communities, which is the private developer that built the village, uh, being converted into multi-tenant houses uh, with rooms as many as, as what we've seen personally, 17. Um, but there are definitely more. And what comes with that is this kind of privatized, uh, not necessarily regulated market. Uh, if you don't know rooming houses in North York, East York, and Scarborough are not permitted. Um, but there's a little bit of a gray area underlining that. There's a 2013 uh, revitalization plan that kind of uh, uh, mentions that multi-tenant housing might be okay because of the, the fiduciary, or sorry, the necessary commitments. Um, to the university and the subsidizing quote unquote of housing that it does or that it offers. So what it's now is this hub for international, uh, domestic, and you know, whether it's laborers or working groups um, that are looking for affordable housing uh, in the city of Toronto. And that's, you know, near public transportation and that's near stores. Um, and and that's, that's what it is today. And I think Andrew's gonna touch on what YVHA is. So what is YVHA? Uh, so it's York's Village Housing Association and we were founded on January 1st, 2018. And we were initially just a housing and uh, housing help and support system for fellow students uh, living in the village at York. And in addition to our contribution to the local community, we also been a part of a variety of symposium and consultations in affiliation with Student Dwell TO program at the uh, University of York. Um, we've hosted a variety of community events, such as workshops and barbecues, and we are currently uh, building a registry for the all like all the 800 houses that are currently in the village. Mm -hmm. And we've es essentially pivoted over into a podcast series now, which we will get more into. And we are also part of the academic institution of the Faculty of Environmental Studies at York University. Mm -hmm. And and as Andrew said, we pivoted to this podcast series, and you guys are obviously listening. It's it's Laville, um, but what we pivoted more towards was instead of collecting information and data about the village, uh, so that we could help maybe make recommendations or democratize the price of housing, um, we decided to actually share some information with the people who live there, um, and disseminate as much information as we can uh, to collectivize, document, and archive the actual lived experiences of villagers. Um, and get some different perspectives, multidisciplinary perspectives on what the village means symbolically, materially from academics also, and also from scholars and professors and, and people that are familiar with the village. And today we're gonna be joined uh, by Aaron Waboku and Raymond Chen. Um, they're amazing guests and I think we'll touch on them a little bit later. Uh, but first a quick shout out to our sponsors uh, for making LaVille possible. So first we'd like to thank Professor Luisa Sotomayor's uh, Student Dwell TO Research Partnership in the Faculty of Environmental Studies at York University 
and also support by a Connections Grant awarded by the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council of Canada. And big shouts out to the research at York position granted by York University to make Laville possible. Thank you for tuning into Laville. Uh, we did want to start off the entire podcast series with a land acknowledgement. It's just something that's key and important. The sacred land on which we operate has been the site of human activity for 15,000 years. It's the land and territory of the Huron, Wendat, and Beitun First Nations, the Mississaugas of the Credit River, and the nations of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy. The territory was subject of to the dish with one bum, with one spoon wampum belt covenant, an agreement between the Haudenosaunee Confederacy and Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for resources around the Great Lakes. Turo Wampum says we're going to live on this land together and respect each other's sovereignty. The dish with one spoon is an agreement that recognizes we all live off the same resources. It's hard to eat a collective meal together off a dish with one spoon. Hence, protocols are put in place to ensure mutual respect and accountability to each other and to the land. Ontario is covered by 46 treaties and other agreements. Today, the meeting place of Toronto is still the home of two Indigenous people across Turtle Island. Our intersecting communities are comprised of those native to this land, Indigenous people from other territories, as well as settlers who have come here by choice, by force, or as a result of colonialism and imperialism. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission calls to action and reaffirms that the treaties with Indigenous peoples must be wealthy, honored, and we are all treated peoples and responsible for honoring and holding these agreements. We're grateful for the opportunity to work on this territory. And I believe, oh, and do we want and, to do the guest profile? Yeah. And at this point, we'd like to illustrate a, a brief biography of the people we will be interviewing today. So Raymond Chen is, uh, well, he's an entrepreneur and he is in school and he already started a few businesses along the way. Uh, some of these uh, businesses involve helping students with homework and also helping students reduce rent by subletting rooms at York University. Uh, he graduated from the university in 2013, and he's been working in the financial industry as an analyst and consultant. Uh, along the way, uh, he, has, he has created a variety of businesses, and he is very passionate about uh, making the world a better place. And he believes that creating business is not just about the money, but definitely about making others have a better life. Uh, so at the same time, you know, he motivates and challenges uh, other creators to build great things. Um, and Raymond has been looking for new opportunities and has been taking on new challenges uh, very recently. And in 2016, he uh, spoke with Aaron Noboku, which will be subsequently uh, discussed about an exciting idea he had adapted. Uh, and they founded an application called Howdy, which will be subsequently discussed. Yeah, and so a little bit about Aaron Waboku. He is a computer programmer and internet entrepreneur, recently graduated from York University in 2016 after completing his undergrad in psychology. Uh, and since, he's worked to build several startups and industries like fintech and AI, designing and building software systems. And by 2007, Aaron co-founded Howdy with his longtime roommate and best friend, Raymond. He believes that technology is an effective tool for empowering young people. And a lifelong learner, Aaron taught himself to code and believe anyone can learn to code, giving themselves a powerful skill to change our digital world. When not working on his startup, Aaron enjoys cooking and hanging out with his pet cat. And we would like to admit both of them into the chat. first episode of Laville guys uh, great having you here um, so I guess tell us a little bit about yourself and your connection to the village at uh, York University cool um, I'm gonna pass it to Aaron first yeah so my name is Aaron I'm a computer programmer and uh, uh, working on a startup Howie with my co-founder Raymond I graduated from York at, uh, in 2016 and uh, actually started psychology but uh, midway through like my degree, I realized that programming was like my core interest. So um, self taught like programmer and uh, I build back end systems and, and uh, work in like fintech and uh, AI. So yeah, it's like my experience. Awesome. Awesome. And could you tell us a little bit about your connection to the village of York? Yeah. So uh, as like an international student, like uh, I didn't really have like an existing connection 
uh, at York. Mm-hmm. So uh, the village is perfect. It was a perfect place to like move to and uh, yeah. cheap rent. And uh, yeah, so like I spent like uh, all four years of my undergrad at in the village, and even when I graduated, I stayed two more years in the village. And uh, Raymond, how about you? And for me, like I'm totally on, the, I'm totally on the opposite side of Aaron. Like I'm not technical at all. So for me, I'm more on the business and operation. Um, so the quick introduction of myself. So I consider myself a, like as an entrepreneur because I when I was even going to York, right? I already doing lots like um, I already finding a different ideas and opportunity on campus which I can make money, right? For example, I started like a like a homework kind of like helping program for students. I also started something like like um, like stop renting houses to reduce rent, things like that, right? So since I graduated from York in 2013, so I constantly looking for opportunity which I can like kind of like not just like help myself to make money, but also help other people around me as well, right? Um, and then along the way, I created other couple of business on the side after I graduated from school, but they're quite they're quite small, right? Until I like, kind of like talk to Aaron in 2016. So he told me the idea about, about Howdy and I find that really exciting and kind of interesting as well. So that's why I kind of just like, you know what, school this. I'm more like my full time on this project and then just like see uh, what this can take us, right? Mm-hmm. Like I mentioned earlier, like myself, I'm not that technical. So I'm more like uh, focused on like the sales and operation of the business. Mm-hmm. So anything which Aaron and I doesn't have time to do or like Aaron and I think it's not his string, I will try to take that on, on myself and then work that out, right? And then, you know, in the business. So, uh, and then if you ask me my connection to the village, right? Actually mm-hmm. quite interesting. So I moved to the village, is like way before Aaron did. And I've lived, lived in the village for like, I would say uh, 10 years, like a decade, right? So someone, someone is this kind of funny and cause I can tell people like, I can't kind of see all the up and down, mm-hmm. like in the village, right? Before they even have the village built up, like th- there was a war between the school and village. When the village was building, I saw that happening. I saw the wall was taken down until now, right? The whole thing was like connected. It's like a quite a fun experience. Mm-hmm. So definitely, I have been like a, I would say it myself is like a, like, like, a, like a patron of like the village, right? So I just moved out like last year. So like that past 10 years has been like a, like a, like a roller coaster, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's really, really interesting. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that kind of actually like leads right into our next question about uh, your positive and negative experiences. So you said it was a roller coaster, Raymond. Uh, you want to expand a little bit more on that idea? Oh yeah, for sure. Like um, as you guys might know, right? Like since we all went to York, we know like around York University, there's no cheap housing, right? Like most students, they're like working, going to school, and like trying to have a better, better life, right? Right. The only place you can find a good housing, not I won't say it's good housing, but a cheap housing will be in the village, right? That's the best side about a village, and like. Pretty much like everybody like going to York, they will be in a village. It's like a well connected network, right? If you know somebody, the person knows somebody, right? If you're looking for anything in the village, you got the cover, right? So that's the good thing about a village is that we close like close net community, right? That's a good thing. But the only thing just like the place has been really mixed kind of like um, area, right? Mm-hmm. Like be- before the subway started, it's more like just like like people, they live around that area and the students and then people fly like from other, other places, but like they started to stay in a village, right? But now since the subway started, right? Everybody can like travel between downtown and, and the village and we still have a really cheap housing, right? Compared to other parts of the city. Mm-hmm. So the place become even more mixed because like not just people live around there, going to school there or like walk around the area. Even people, they like studying, like working in Scarborough or working at downtown, they will still choose to live in a village. Yeah. So make the place even more mixed, right? Mm-hmm. I see the past couple of years, more and more family are coming to a village and buying houses because like, the housing in a village is still really cheap for someone like want to start a family. Uh, but just like, because like the whole like transition, the whole like, mixed, mixed kind of like, population, it just make the place like, I won't say it's bad, but just really like, uh, for someone they're not familiar with like, the culture, you give them a different kind of feeling for sure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah I, th- I think it's in itself like its own little microcosm yeah yeah it, in, in the diverse community that builds around it definitely touches yeah, on a whole exactly, bunch of different yeah. spaces but i think that notion of affordability like at the heart of everything that's really exactly, what brings right? people together in the city of toronto yeah sure. what's funny is so even people from outside of city right outside of like north york they will move there 
just because of rent ship, right? That that's just blow my mind, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I completely agree. I actually know, uh, and Reikia, she's one of our guests here. She goes to Humber and she went to school there. I remember Edric, who was my roommate downstairs. He also, yeah. uh, he studied at Humber for a year and he ended up going to Seneca too. But like, it, it's a whole different mix of people that go there. Um, there are U of T students, Ryerson students. There are people who aren't students at all uh, that are just working and living there, laborers um elderly folk everybody there's all types of classes in the village yeah exactly um, yeah exactly yeah and i think our next question is going to be directed towards aaron yeah yeah aaron so um again you know raymond uh, actually gave us a bit of insight onto his experiences and uh, how it's changed a lot over the years uh, mm -hmm. do you have any input during your time there uh, yeah actually closer to six years so like i did my entire undergrad in college and then uh because rent is so cheap like even when i joined the workforce i decided to like commute all the way downtown because it's just way cheaper. During my time, changes like obviously like the opening up like the subway system, the subway station really changed the landscape a bit. Like I guess over time, it started to feel less like a student neighborhood and more of just like a just a more <laughs> pure. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, <laughs> so cool. that's so true. Yeah. As like more like immigrants just start moving in and like the, 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 I guess like the demographic changed quite a bit then too. Mm -hmm. And in terms of like uh, amenities, uh, yeah, the quad. So that's like something that was like a big, so when I moved out of the village, like the quad wasn't really open. It was just like a bunch of construction. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, coming to visit like Raymond and like seeing like the like bubble tea and like, like Osmos and like all the different like food places and like, I feel like a shopping mall is like wow <laughs> <laughs> so that's like something uh, becoming more like a just like a residential like long-term living like community yeah so that's something that definitely changed well wow, right on yeah and you know like with your experiences and everything we like to touch uh, upon a different subject and that's uh, safety so it's often a stigmatized issue in both the village and the broader community and, you know, I mean, we hear things about, you know, stabbings, uh, you know, forced evictions and just overall precarious living standards within the village. Uh, and what are you like, what are your thoughts on the safety and, and how do you think we can essentially create a, a safer community out here? Uh, I think overall, like, the neighborhood is not, it, it has a bad rep, but I, I didn't have any negative experiences personally in the village. Like, I was around the village. I, because it, so like dense you word travels but personally i think i think definitely a lot can be done to increase like safety i guess i don't know if it's, it's as direct as like a more like a larger like police presence because the red there already is but a heavy presence uh on site i, I think maybe if the I guess like what you're doing, right? Like having like like a village association, if like there is more of like a platform for like people who have concerns or like people who want to like pull together to like help the community to like organize, I think that could like do great things for safety in the village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think I think that's exactly kind of what we were building off of, based on our own experiences. It wasn't necessarily like there's any one tangible thing we could do. I mean, we did want to, you know, create housing help and support options for, for, for everybody. Um, yeah. But we started again, pivoting to kind of doing community events and hosting a community barbecue and seeing that, uh, you know, it wasn't like the results, but but people really appreciated like the, the person to person contact and learning, mm -hmm. learning about things in the village that they didn't know before, right? Which yeah. is super, super interesting. And uh, I think I think before uh, we, we talk a little bit more about how you guys help get everybody connected, I wanted to ask Raymond real quickly, um, what, what, what exactly do people just on the topic of safety, what are people saying about safety in the village or what, what do people say about their experiences? Um, that's a really good question, right? So for me, like I can, I, I totally can second Aaron because I, when I was living in a village for the past 10 years, like things have been changed a lot, right? Like the safety thing wasn't a big concern in the beginning. Like people don't talk about it. I don't know if because it's the school wasn't like pushing like the safety guideline or like doing all the like the news update and stuff. But in the recent years, things are getting much more faster. So when something comes out, 
right? Couple, maybe like a day after, right? You see like your saying like, oh, like this thing happened, just be careful, so on, so on, mm-hmm. right? Um, so just to your point, you know, I can a little bit freeze here. Um, can we repeat your question again? Just yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Uh, the, the question is like, what do people say about safety? You know, uh, I, I know that again, um, we talk a lot about, or, or we know that you're like, you've been in the community for 10 years and yeah, there's a yeah. lot of discourse about safety. Um, yeah. And in recent times, you're saying that it's kind of picked up a little bit, right? Um, yeah, it picked up a little bit. Because back then, was like not, not many people, are, we pay attention to it. And then in the recent year, right, especially like just during my, my year at York, like, things started happening mm-hmm. and people like spend more and more more and more time on like focus on those news right mm-hmm. and then other thing would be like the news media they're also looking for news they can like share yeah. around like in the morning so that kind of like keep the pressure to the school or even for the media around the area when things happen you come you come you come to student or comes to residents directly right away right and for me while I was living there I do know a couple like uh people they own the house around the village right mm-hmm. so for me like for the safety thing most people they most of the common thing they would tell me just like the place is not like not the like not a bad place, right? It's like the safety thing is like it was a concern, but it's not a big issue to them because like most of the time you let's say you come home, right? You don't go out at night, right? Like compared to other community in the uh in, in the city of Toronto, the village actually have lost like uh like like lights on the street. Like if you're walking in the street, you pretty much like you see from the the end of the street to no from the yeah. The beginning of the street to the end of the street, right? Just in one one lock, right? But in other community, right, you don't see that, right? Because I like I think like that's all the people doing stuff in the village, protect the people there and give more like a, 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 a sense of safety already, right? And most people there like don't like if you decide to live in the village, to be honest, the safety thing to you is not a big concern, right? You know, like, hey, that place might not be the best, but like hey, hey for, for me at this moment, right, it's the best place that I, I should stay in, right? So that's kind of the, the vibe I'm getting from most people I spoke to when I was at school. But in the recent year, right, of course, like, things have been like, stay the same, right? Especially like, like even last year or the year before, before I moved out, right? The safety issue wasn't like become like more and more serious. It's just like, it just died down, right? Like I, either because I like, just think getting more, more safe, the place is getting more safe because I like, more cup, more cups are patrolling around the place mm-hmm. at night. And like people have become more conscious, right? especially for landlord as well. And one thing just to mention about the safety thing, right? On top of like what Aaron mentioned it, mm-hmm. like the landlord can do a really, like can help in the safety thing in the village because like, they own the place themselves, right? Mm-hmm. The reason why there's so many people like from different area, area is just like the landlord accepted those ap- applicants, right? Even they're not like up to certain standard, they still be like, hey, you can pay money, like just move in, right? So things like that, I think somehow like, I don't know who can do, do, uh, do things uh, kind of like, I don't know who can I like, come in and interfere in, interfere those kind of action, but I do think like if the landlord can take part of like the whole like conversation, the village will become a different place for sure, mm-hmm. right? Like not it's not gonna be like people gonna be like uh won't like at least people have a background check, right? You know who, who who they are, you know where they're from, you know what they do, right? So it gives a sense of like safety to everybody in the village. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see. And uh, just touching back on that, uh, like the whole concept of safety, Raymond. Um, so in your 10 years here, uh, the university doesn't really have all that much affiliation with the village, but they did implement a couple measures, uh, not recently, but over the course of the last 10 years or so uh, mm-hmm. with the village uh, transit, the shuttle bus and with the Go yeah. Safe program mm-hmm. yeah. that uh, the university implemented. So mm-hmm. in your like, have you like, were you able to see any changes from that period from when it was erected until now, or has it remained just about the same? Um, I can be honest with you, like so for the for the chance itself, it stayed the same because yeah. I back then they I had they've been doing that since I was in first year was back in two thousand nine, right? They have been doing that for a long time, right? I think what's improved is like the um the red zone, well, not the red zone, but like um I I think the go safe, right? Go safe. They want you to um to to the end of the village so basically they walk you to like the border between school and the village yes. and then you, you can go go like go on with your uh, go on your own right so mm-hmm. that's kind of different they dif- like the, the difference they implemented in the past couple of years mm-hmm. right and from my from my experience right it does it does do a good job for some people if let's say they, they live close by to the to the border yeah. of the village and, and school right it's easy for them to just go by without running any issue right and some people if they live in even further away right that would be a different story right and for me i don't have an experience about those kind of situation mm-hmm. but like just from what i heard from my my friends like my 
the people I know in the village, right? It definitely improved, right? Especially for female, right? For for guys, I like, to be honest, I like, at least I, I haven't used them before, right? But for female, definitely it's a, it's gonna be a good help. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's great. And uh yeah, now we now we kind of got like a, a little bit of a background of your experiences here at the village in York. Um we want to talk a little bit more about uh how do you uh we know you started at York University and we're truly proud to be in a so- our affiliation with your uh application and uh do you, do you or Aaron maybe want to touch on like the moment essentially that catalyzed this creation? Or? Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll give this to Aaron because I it's kind of his my, his baby. So, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Aaron, go ahead. Uh, yeah. So yeah, like initially came from like a hackathon, right? So it's like that to like think of like a project to, like work on, right? And uh, we're just thinking about like community and like or like the lack of right especially in a village and it was just seemed like a very like powerful concept right like if like you want to like go to the gym right and like you want someone to like spot you right like why not like invite someone that's like right next door right or like let's say you're like you want to like go watch a movie or like let's say oh, let's say you're you're out and then you, you're not going to be available to like sign for a package right like i have had like a couple of packages like stolen on my time in the village right what if you could just like reach out to one of your neighbors and like tell them hey like the postman is going to be dropping off something and, like just keep an eye out for it or like just take it inside and i'll see you like once i'm back and pick it up right stuff like that right so like it's like a very like powerful concept and kind of like stuck with me even after like the initial like hack fun we were able to like build it out then but yeah so like uh around like 2007 uh sorry 2017 i was already out of the like i was still in the village but i was like already out of york and uh i was working and like friends was going through some stuff and he was like hey like what if we start this we did a startup right and i was like yeah, like we have have this idea, we can like definitely work on this, yeah. and that's how it like started. And we just started like we had like the basic idea of like community of like neighbor neighborhoods, mm-hmm. and we just kind of like built it from there. Yeah, nice. And it's constantly evolving and growing and changing too. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Sorry, you mentioning earlier. You know how the community was kind of changing and. It seems like this was like a real great response to, to adjusting to that change, right? Trying to build a sense of community through a different way, creating like an actual platform where people can communicate. And I think, yeah. I think that that's absolutely amazing. So I want to know a little bit more about um, either of y'all, what you guys think, uh, how does how do you connect and help students at York? So the biggest way it's like, it, it allows you to like know who's next to you. Like it was like, it allows you to like, meet people who are like at york people are like the village people that like you have a lot in common with right just by the virtue of you being in like in the same place right and it, it's like a safe open community and like they're very helpful right like the community like it's kind of like a like a hive mind right of like people working together to help each other mm. and uh it's also it's, it's safe right because everyone it's like it's not it's not an anonymous platform so people have like their real identities there so you can know like hey i'm talking to a real person and like i'm, I'm not getting catfished or like <laughs> lied to. Yeah. yeah so yeah so like those are some of the ways and it's also like we also have like incentivize like good behavior like we recognize like helpful neighbors so there's really like the opportunity to like do something good and feel good about it yeah yeah absolutely absolutely and with that, um, I mean, with all your progress now, uh, you mentioned uh, last time we spoke that uh, you wanted to really invest more time uh, into into Howdy at the, at the York University. Um, but then another point, you said you wanted to kind of move forward and branch out a little bit further, different universities. So where do you see the future of Howdy going? Uh, I'd say, let's just say, a, you know, for speculation, maybe like an eight-year sort of. Yeah. So the future is definitely like, communication right we really want to like enable people to not only know like the people around them but to get to like know them not to know that they're around but like to actually interact with them 
and uh, build like a build like a network, right? Mm -hmm. So like the future is uh, so like right now we're focused at York, and what our main goal at York is is like make sure that we have a great product, right? We're gonna keep on getting feedback from like the community and like using that feedback to like improve the product. Mm -hmm. And uh, once we we're comfortable with the product that we have and the engagement that it has amongst the community. We would like to like share that across, like across the world as, 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 as far as we can take it. So hopefully in eight years, like I, I hope how it is, it's the first thing, like, like you're moving to a new neighborhood, like you're like nervous, you don't know what it's going to be like, you download the app, and then you like you sign up and then you see like okay cool uh you can then ask like hey like where are good food places around here and then people like immediately respond and you can have that conversation like you can chat in real time uh or like let's say like you even before you even finish moving like you can call hey like i need help moving this big box right and then so it's like hey i can help you out like sure and then like just have those organic like interactions yeah and i think i think exactly that those are organic interactions really end up fostering not only a sense of community builds good and lasting relationships between people um and and it helps them deal with whatever stresses that that come with you know maybe potentially living whether in a great place and or in in, in not the greatest place right um yeah. it's those lines of communication and it's 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 the connection that you look for whether you're a student going to university or whether you're somebody who's just trying to find a safe and affordable place uh yeah. to lay your head at night right and i think i think that's one thing i would like to thank you guys both for right for creating that platform uh and making it possible for for like people like us like andrew and i uh to communicate and and you know give kudos to people who help me out when i don't know what movie to watch or binge watch on netflix right those things are, are <laughs> yeah. super key and and they just they're the small things that make a living experience better so I want to thank both of you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, thank you. Yeah, if, if you guys have any questions for us at all, now's a good time to shoot. Uh, but otherwise, um, uh, feel free. Yeah, to actually, I don't have a specific question, but I do want to give a shout out, right? Um, so Aaron and I have been working on, like, actually, like Aaron and I and the team have been working on a feature for a long time, mm -hmm. right? Kind of like, the, I would say it's the next level of like what we have now. It's like going, changing from like the posting on Howdy mm -hmm. to just a group chat function, right? So like the group chat is like what we believe in. Yep. right like going forward from now on right so the new feature actually coming out really soon so it's already available on android it's coming to ios soon right so mm -hmm. i don't give a shout out to everybody listening to this live podcast right go on like um howdyapp.com like howdy of i app.com and start for mailing list and then once it's out we'll send you guys an email and then just download it and try it it and Aaron and i and the team also plan to bring back the gift card idea right for a limited time so uh, down Howdy and then testing for us. When you find bugs on Howdy, you have a chance to win the gift card, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds brilliant. Yeah, yeah. 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 Aaron, do you have anything on the app? Uh, no, that's perfect. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, make sure, make, make sure like, follow us on Howdy, uh, social media and all that stuff, like standard stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, yeah. that's absolutely amazing. I don't know if y'all heard that, everybody, but you know, basically for being a good person, you can get a gift card um, and, and try out and help Howdy as well. And essentially, you're helping yeah. your entire community. Like that's that's big wins. That's big wins to me. Yeah. Um, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for yeah, having no, us here. Yeah. And then, yeah, it has been fun. All right, we'll let you go though. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys, and uh, thanks, we'll catch you next time. Yeah, yeah, talk right. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye. All righty. So that was a good podcast. Uh, I feel like, uh, you know, there's good communication, uh, mm -hmm. there's good flow of questions. And I really liked uh, Raymond's perspective, uh, mainly because, you know, he's been in the village for so long. And I feel like, you know, his input is important because he's able to see that drastic change over over X amount of time. And, mm -hmm. you know, like even his input on like the safety and has more policing and mm -hmm. it's, it's ensuring that people are more safer in the area. Mm -hmm. And I actually think that, you know, for so many people who live in the village or who go to university and are seeking like student housing, there's such a transitory nature. Like there's a high turnover. People are in the village and they're out of the village. So hearing from somebody who's been there for so long, I think that speaks volumes. And I, I also 
did really want to actually touch on the one perspective that he had. He mentioned that if landlords had uh, essentially more power over the terms of their leases, uh, he felt that, you know, there would be a little bit more change, a little bit more of a positive change in the community. And I, I, I generally, you know, as a tenant, have not really meshed or vibed with that idea, but I, I want, I wish, I, I wish we could have expanded on that, right? I wish we could have learned a little bit more, maybe what kind of, uh, you know, being able to do a background check, those kinds of things, right? Like I want to know, but I also want to see what the consequences of that would be, right? The people who really need housing, but might not get housing because of a dumb mistake they made, uh, you know, in their lives. So I think that that was a really, really interesting, interesting little piece. Yeah, I feel like it was a great episode. And uh, just quick shout out to Aaron and Raymond. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank and so uh, yeah, please tune in on the following week's podcast. Nadia and I will give a brief a brief overview of the future podcast series that are going to take place over the seven series. Uh, so now do you want to... Yeah, yeah. We have six more episodes lined up for you on Laville. Um, and we're going to be starting out with common issues with student and multi-tenant housing at York University. Uh, it's going to be posted June 5th. You can find us on YouTube. We'll also be posting to Apple Music and Spotify, but that'll be a little bit later. Um, and we're going to be joined by Bria Hamilton and Sarah Levy of the Affordable Housing Committee at York University. Uh, and we're going to be talking York. We're going to be talking affordable housing, uh, the role of international versus domestic students, where tenant disputes kind of fit into play, whether you're at a multi-tenant house versus being in York University as an institution, the rooming housing there, and what's the difference between student and multi-tenant housing. There's a key difference there. Um, and then finally, we'll kind of classify all that as the on-off campus experience, and we'll go through a consultation that we did with the Affordable Housing Committee in 2018. So, yeah, and jumping right up into the next podcast, which will take place on June 10th, is on the subject of living in the village, the shared and unshared experience. Uh, and rather than Natty and I hosting this episode, a few colleagues of ours from yours truly, York Village Housing Association, representatives Javier de los Santos and Claudia Redondo will be speaking with Rekia, Somto, Brianna, Emmanuel, and Britannia um, about their experience in the village at York University. And some of the key points are going to be associated with the Landlord and Tenant Board, uh, the Social Justice Tribunal of Ontario, uh, situation with COVID, uh, rent and rent strike, uh, access to resources, uh, social housing disputes, City of Toronto's role, strategies moving forward, uh, forced evictions experienced by students, and health and safety. And I wouldn't miss that episode because those experiences will really shape the economics versus the experience of multi-tenant housing on Thursday of that week. And it's going to be posted June 12th and we'll be joined by almost soon to be Dr. Daria Tarhan, uh, villager Matt V. Huff, and Joy Connolly. Um, we're going to be talking about the economic and social role of rooming houses, uh, space making and or taking. Um, again, we're going to touch on health and what the city could probably do to improve this situation. Uh, and then risk, vulnerability, the discourse of safety, and we're going to be touching on research that taps into all of those topics. The following podcast series will take place on June 17th. And the subject for this one is student housing privatization and urban activism at York University and beyond. Our guests for this day are Allison Evans, Jamila Muhammad, and Tristan Lang, who all have experience at working with cooperative housing and student housing within the GTA. Our key points for this one, or for this podcast, are urbanization, uh, York University, new problems and new responses, new and old strategies, a vision for the future, and private and public sector, private versus public social sector of student housing. And after that, we're going to talk about the village in a little bit of a broader context and the new, quote unquote, Jane Finch community and or, you know, aka York University Heights. Um, and we're going to be posting that June 25th. Our guest for that episode will be Artavan, Professor Artavan, Isa Durad, uh, Professor Yasser Hamid, uh, community and social justice advocate Shannon Holness and assistant professor Jenny Foster. And we're going to be talking about studentification. Really, really interesting concept. I would suggest tuning in. Um, and new suburbia or new urbanism, as we spoke about earlier. Gentrification and development versus uneven development. Uh, the Jane Finch community and town-gown relations, which again is another interesting concept that's kind of involving universities and their communities. Uh, the role of marginalization, housing, and periphery, semi-periphery relations in the city of Toronto. And the following podcast series will actually take place on the same week, on June 26th. And this podcast is dedicated to the future of student housing. 
Uh, our guests for this day are Jeremy Bowes, Sheila McCartney, Mauricio Quiroz, Marcelo Vieta, Luisa Sotomayor, and Shimiza Gafour. Uh, our key points for this podcast are student housing in Toronto universities, uh, past versus present conditions, public and private development, new flaws and or solutions, uh, design and ac architecture of student housing, new imaginaries of democratic and equitable student living. And I hope that you guys can hear it in our voice, but to be clear, we are not any legal entity or we are not legal representation. We're villagers trying to help villagers uh, and, and trying to represent what villagers when we can. And if you do want to decide to learn more about your rights as a tenant, you can check our website out. You can learn more about the village at yvha.ca. Go to the go uh, Government of Ontario's website, uh, Tenants Ontario, Your Rights, uh, the Landlord and Tenant Board Tribunal uh, at sgto.gov.on.ca, and the Federation of Metropolitan Tenants Association at torontotenants.org. And you can also learn more about student and multi-tenant multi housing uh, in your area. York University also provides information in addition to the City of Toronto's website. And you can also learn more about the, our housing uh, help and support systems through YVHA at yvha.ca. And you can email us at yorkvillagehousing at gmail.com. And we're almost coming to a close. But if you heard this podcast and you have something that you want to share, please send us your story. And in return, enter a chance to win one of 10 custom YVHA t-shirts. Uh, and to share your story, you can email us, again, at yorkvillagehousing at gmail.com, Facebook at Housing York, Instagram at YorkVHA, and Twitter at Housing York. And if you live in the village, you can go one step further. You can join our group on Facebook. It's a private group uh, at York Village Housing Association, just a group of people um, that are trying to help each other and, and, and make that experience as great as possible. And you can register your home. Pri pr please provide us a little bit of information, details about the living conditions, um, so that we can make and propose those recommendations and disseminate information at the same time. All right, I'm Andrew. I'm Natty. And thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll catch you next week.